This meeting is being recorded. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you for, um, as Mike was saying, one year, uh, I believe it's one year tomorrow, of these um, excellent webinars um, that have relied, truly relied on the excellent questions that we get from our residents um, and the feedback that we've gotten about how these, these are going. And so we want to uh, just, again, remind everybody about the um, the Q&A feature. Um, if you just move your mouse around, you'll see it pop up in that bar um, and you can click on it and just start populating our Q&A. Um, and that way we've got a lot of good questions waiting for us when we get to the end. Um, uh, we're going to start with um, our usual welcome, a uh, brief explanation of what we're doing here. What is body? What is, who is DAT and how are they involved? Um, and then um, in response to just some questions that we've had, some, some inquiries about um, uh, the, the whole broadband performance, um, we wanted to make sure that we shared sort of a little bit on the gigabit experience. Um, and then we're going to update you on the project areas. I know that's what a lot of you are here for, especially those in the upcoming project areas. Um, and then for people that haven't been on these calls or haven't been on these calls for a while, um, we're gonna do a full rundown of the ordering and installation process, um, and then we'll move into Q&A. Um, so again, submit those questions. The Q&A function is what we're gonna use today for all questions that you might have. Um, and so if you, um, at any point in time, uh, have a question, just shake your mouse around, click on the Q&A function, and then you'll be able to populate your questions. And at the end, we will start answering them. In fact, sometimes we'll go ahead and start answering them in the uh, uh, by text. So feel free to put your questions in. So uh, the Virginia Telecommunications Initiative um, is a, a program of the Department of Housing and Community Development Broadband Office. That's the Virginia Department of Housing and Community Development's Broadband Office. Um, it requires um, a public-private partnership to fund, to direct state funding towards uh, broadband expansion projects. Um, and so in that case, um, our broadband authority, the Almaral Broadband Authority, was the applicant uh, in partnership with, at the time, CenturyLink, now Brightspeed, um, for a project um, that uh, committed $2.3 million of state funding, um, as well as I believe $640,000 from the county um, and a significant investment from Brightspeed um, towards 1,600 new passings. Um, and there, a passing means it is an addressable location, a location that we can actually bring fiber to. So most likely something that's got a 911 address and a structure on it. So if any of you on the call are planning on building somewhere um, inside the service area, uh, the big thing that you just got to remember is once you've got a 911 address, that's when you need to reach out to us to, so that we can make sure that you're going to be included in this project. Um, and the roles, um, obviously, DHCD is is the the funder. Um, uh, Brightspeed is the private provider, so they're the ones that are actually going to be doing the work um, along with their subcontractors of putting in uh, uh, fiber and and getting everybody connected. And um, our role, um, both as uh, the broadband authority, uh, but then our office's role, the broadband accessibility and affordability office's role in all of this is to serve as the liaison uh, between the residents and our providers. Um, ultimately, the broadband authority is responsible for the grant. Um, so if you see some documents, if you see some news and, it's, and it talks about the broadband uh, authority, the broadband authority is not installing fiber, um, our partner is. Um, and our role um, is to make that as uh, effective and efficient a process as possible. Um, and, and that work comes hand in hand with our partners at Brightspeed. Um, so anytime you have an issue uh, or a question related to this project um, or to broadband issues in general, um, you are always welcome to reach out to us. Our email, and you'll hear it a lot, baao at albemarle.org. Um, and, and, and I've got that last point. We're not merely an intermediary. You know, our, our role isn't to just take your question and hand it over. Um, our role is to be that contact that can help people work through their issues, to advocate for the, uh, for the residents, and to make sure that they experience a positive resolution to, to what's going on. Um, now, um, as part of that, um, we like to share a little bit about um, what you can expect from your uh, gigabit connection, what you can expect from this whole process. And um, we've gotten some questions related to um, customers that have received their service 
Um, and then maybe their, their speed tests in particular, their speed tests aren't where they really, really want them um, to be. Um, so again, I just wanna spend a little time talking about the experience of gigabit internet. Um, I won't say from whom uh, for propriety's sake, uh, but I have had gigabit internet for several years now um, and have enjoyed having internet that I never have to think about. Um, and that is actually, uh, believe it or not, gonna be the biggest change that you'll experience in having uh, fiber optic internet service. Um, it is the relief from anxiety over whether you'll be able to accomplish the thing you wanna do online. Um, having said that, I will also say that you might find something different um, that, that that you almost never see um, your speeds in the things that you're doing approaching what you would think of as gigabit speeds. Um, and, and there's a few reasons why. Um, while you are purchasing a gigabit service, a gigabit internet solution, it isn't like there is a gigabit wide pipe dedicated just to you from your house all the way to the cloud um, or all the way to your phone or to your laptop. Um, instead, your gigabit connection goes to the network facility that we've talked about, the GPON. Um, and then that GPON actually has a wider connection than gigabit. Um, and it shares that wider connection amongst all of the users on addressing that particular GPON. Um, so that the experience is up to one gigabit per user. Um, that connection is split up in a, in a few different ways, uh, depending on whether you're downloading or whether you're sending. Um, and, and does that mean then that that you're, you're getting sold a bill of goods. You know, you're not actually getting what you're asking for. No. Um, if the network has capacity, um, if your home network is addressed properly, is configured properly, and if the server that you're accessing is actually provisioned to serve you at gigabit speeds, then you can see speeds approaching the theoretical limit of a gigabit connection. Um, the rest of the time, however, you're sharing um, the access on this greater than gigabit pipe um, that is still going to be at speeds that will be significantly many times faster than your current connection. Um, in the years that I've had a gigabit, gigabit connection, I've only seen north of 900 megabits per second three times. And all three times, it was downloading the same 100 gigabyte file, because that's the kind of, of nerd that I am, um, from a server that I knew was provisioned to provide uh, uh, upload speeds as, as fast as possible. Um, and it was in the middle of the day uh, when there weren't many users in my neighborhood because it was pre-pandemic. Um, and, and so I was the only one working from home, uh, accessing my network, accessing the, the, the pipe and accessing a resource that was able to give me those speeds. Um, around the country, um, certainly in our area, most users have connections that are well below gigabit right now. Often the average is closer to 100 megabits per second than it is to uh, gigabit. And that means that if you're an internet services company and you're getting ready to serve your customers, um, you're not going to provision your systems to work at gigabit speeds all the time or often or, or ever. Um, instead, you're going to actually target it to what is going to be the best experience for your users, the, the most effortless experience. Um, because if you provision it for faster, you're paying more money um, than your users can actually experience. You know, you're paying for that faster service without necessarily benefiting your customers. So they're gonna they're gonna optimize their services to what the experience they want to give you. Um, additionally, there's a lot that goes into your connection um, inside your home. Um, if you're on Wi-Fi, your internet connection is limited by the speeds that your devices are capable of. Um, it's limited by the distance between yourself and your uh, access point. Um, it's limited by the interconnections between your access point and your router or your uh, uh, the, the ONT, the, the device that's actually connected. Um, it's also limited by any physical barriers. Um, as, as little as the, the depth of your body can actually block Wi-Fi signals sufficiently that your service is going to be worse if you are literally just holding your phone and standing in between yourself and your router. Um, so when you're ex what your goal is 
uh, when, when you're dealing with these uh, devices and, and trying to get speeds, isn't necessarily to always have gigabit speed on every device in every situation. Um, it's to make sure what, what their goal, what everybody's goal is, is to make sure that your internet um, is adequate for what you're doing so that you have that zero anxiety, effortless experience. Um, now, if after you have um, your connection um, and you're struggling with Wi-Fi signal issues um, in, in parts of your house, uh, then you can consider upgrading your network. Um, that's always an option available to you. Um, you can talk to CenturyLink about their solutions for providing uh, a, a mesh network is one of the uh, solutions that they have. Um, you could also talk to me. I'm happy to just talk to you in general about other solutions that you can you can explore, um, including something as, as bonkers as what we did, and which was to put um, access points all over our house and have a central router in a network closet somewhere that it requires tons of, of complex uh, configuration and maintenance and is something that is a complete eyesore and that my wife made me put into a closet because she thought it was ridiculous, um, which it is um, because we don't really need all that much, but it was something that I enjoyed doing. Um, but again, the, the key is to remember that the goal in most cases still isn't to ensure that all your devices have gigabit speeds, rather it is to ensure that your experience of your connection is reliable, consistent, and that it's fast enough. Um, so why am I telling you all this? When you get your connection, you're gonna be eager to test it out. Um, you're probably going to feel very compelled to pull out your phone or your laptop or a tablet and to start running speed tests over and over and over and over again. And you're probably going to walk away from that experience feeling a little deflated because you paid for 940 megabits per second and you're seeing 400, 500, 100. Um, that experience um, isn't what your network was designed for uh, because it's possible that all of your neighbors who also just got their network connections also just came home and they're really excited and they're doing the same thing. And that means that resources are now getting constrained from people doing speed tests over and over again. You're also probably not optimally taking those speed tests. Bright speed, when it is prepared to, to, to uh, release a location, they're actually running tests from your ONT, that's the optical network terminal, it's the device that the fiber is connected to, um, back and forth to the GPON to make sure that that connection is at gigabit speeds, because that's the important one. And that's the one that they're guaranteeing is going to be at gigabit speeds. It doesn't necessarily mean that all of your traffic is going to be traveling at gigabit speeds. So instead of sitting there and, and hitting the speed test over again, consider some other uh, ways to, to trial run your network. Um, for instance, pick a movie that you really, really enjoy and sit down and enjoy the experience of watching it without any buffering. Um, while you're on that, watching that movie, go ahead and pull your phone out or your tablet or your laptop and do something else really network intensive, like having a video call with a friend while that movie is streaming or have somebody else in another part of the house watching a completely different movie. Um, those are the sorts of experiences that are opened up and that aren't necessarily dependent on making sure that you have as much gigabit capacity all the time, but rather are the, the way that the network is structured so that you always have the experience that you're looking for. Now, in a few minutes, um, representatives from Brightspeed are going to have a conversation with y'all about what is the experience that you need to be aware of, that you need to go ahead and say, oh, I, you know, I, I really... I need to call Brightspeed and get this addressed. Um, and they'll also talk about the diagnoses and, and the ways that they're going to approach uh, assisting you to make sure you get what you're looking for. Um, the reason I wanted to share this is because I just wanted to level set. I wanted to level set that um, just because you're not seeing 940 megabits per second every time you hit a speed test or ever when you hit a speed test um, doesn't mean that you're not getting the experience that you're paying for. And it doesn't mean that your internet experience, your gigabit experience is worse than it should be. All it means is those tests are really hard on networks, um, and there's a lot of distance between your phone or tablet or, or a desktop computer and the server that you're pinging, and there's a lot of traffic going in between them. And so you're not likely to ever see 940 megabits per second on those tests. Um, so with that, um, I'm going to be done talking for a little while. Uh, ah, no, I lied. We're going to do quick updates on project areas. Um, so great news. Um, installation in uh, Taylor's Gap is occurring. If anybody is in the Taylor's Gap area and you're having trouble, um, absolutely let us know um, whether it's um, an installation that, that 
it hasn't been done yet and you want to ask some questions, reach out to us, baao at albemarle.org. If you're having trouble placing an order and you haven't reached out to us yet, please do, baao at albemarle.org. Orders are now being placed for Rosemont. So construction operations were completed and people are placing orders in Rosemont. Again, same thing to you all. Um, we're going we're gonna to generally steer people to try online first. Um, we know people have had some, some connection issues and things haven't worked out properly, but try online first. Um, and then um, if you're having trouble, reach out to us or reach out to uh, Brightspeed by phone and try to get it addressed that way. Um, if you placed a premature order, there's about 20 of you that put your orders a little bit beforehand because of a hiccup in the, in the ordering system. Um, those orders should be addressed by phone. Um, we sent out uh, in our email that we sent out, there was a phone number that we included. That's the, the pathway that you should be taking. Um, we know that there are some issues with some locations and some addresses that weren't working out the way that you wanted to on those customer service calls. Um, if you had a, an unsatisfactory uh, uh, result, try again. Um, and if you're still having trouble getting it addressed, reach out to us and we'll do our best to make sure that it gets addressed. Um, and, and again, future guidance on these project areas is going to be to let you know when construction has started. Um, and um, we will, we, residents, we're going to send you guys an email specifically about um, what, uh, when construction has started, but also specifically when you can place orders. So it'll, on the day of, we're going to let you know. And the reason that we wait until that day of that we let you know is because by the time we email you, we've already put in some of your addresses to make sure that it's working. So that is what you can expect. And with that, we're also going to talk about Stony Point and Keswick. Um, so the tranches have been released. They're there on the right. Um, street lists for these tranches are being prepared so that we can share them with you all. Um, we will share them to specific communities. So don't worry about getting spammed with too many emails about this, but um, you can expect sometime soon some lists that are going to tell you which tranche you're in. As we said, we're not telling you when, uh, you know, a date by which you're going to launch. Uh, instead, we're telling you that construction has started. And so with that, we can tell you construction is ongoing in all of the Stony Point tranches. Um, so East Ham, Stony Point, which in this case is referencing the area around the school, um, and Bell Store, construction is actually happening in all of these areas, which is really great. Um, we're the, the part of the delay in the Stony Point project area um, is that we're actually waiting. And this isn't really a delay. This is just, uh, the, I shouldn't use that word. This is just the process. They're waiting for a connection from Polo Grounds. So actual capacity for that network launch is coming from Polo Grounds. Um, and so it's pretty great that Stony Point, I'm sorry, Profit Road is one of the areas that's going to get addressed because there are going to be um, connections available there. Um, so again, construction is ongoing in all Stony Point tranches. We will email you um, as soon as you can place orders. And we will announce when construction begins in the Keswick uh, tranches as soon as it has happened. Um, and so right now that's going to be the Sismont Campbell tranche and then the Cobham tranche. And now actually with that, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to throw it over to our friends at Brightspeed. Um, on the line today, we have Rich Shulman, who's the Virginia Government Affairs Director, um, Nancy Devenay from uh, Brightspeed's Marketing, as well as Heather Lee. Um, and so with that, I'll throw it to you, Rich. Great. Thanks so much. Uh, let's see. Want to take me on to the first slide? Let's see. <clears throat> Next one in, if you would. Okay, so again, as, as Jason mentioned, uh, here's kind of where we are sitting uh, right now. I actually was out there, uh, spent spent the day out there yesterday, uh, driving up and down uh, Dick Woods Road and uh, Stony Point Market, um, and saw a lot of various places where we're doing different uh, different amounts of work. I think I was on uh, uh, Turkey Sag, and I saw somebody stopped and. Uh, I saw them take, they were, we were doing a boring and I saw somebody taking a picture from their car, probably couldn't believe that they saw it. So if, if you were there, I waved at you, hello again. Um, but, but just so you know, cause I see some questions in the chat about this, you know, hey, they're seeing, thing they're seeing things happening. What does that kind of mean for you? So just, I want to just step just back just for a second to give you some idea. So, you know, the, the, the project really is in a couple of phases. One of the, the first phase, phase is, We've we've got to get those fiber connections along the main the, the main routes. So you know whether that would be uh, Dick Woods Drive or Stony Point Market, and then and then the lines start to go in on some of those roads, like I was talking about with Turkey Turkey Sag, 
And so, you know, what that customer saw and what, what you'll see as you drive around a lot is you'll see these pieces of orange uh, plastic pipe that are sticking up and you'll see those in various locations. And what, what that kind of means is that we're doing borings there to go under things that we need to go under because we can't plow, plow in. So those are some of the first signs that you'll see that work is on the way is you'll start to see those boring crews that are doing that kind of work. Then they're gonna come in and they'll trench in, in the places where, uh, where they don't need to bore because boring takes a lot of time. Uh, they'll, they'll be trenching those areas in. And so that's kind of the first phase of what you'll see. Um, and so you, and, and as I was driving around yesterday, I saw lots of those in lots of areas. So, you know, it's, it's exciting to see things moving. Once, that, once all that gets done, then, then we have to come in and, and place a lot of the um, electronics. So then you'll start to see uh, big boxes that get put into place. Um, and then sometime after that, we'll do testing on all of those. And sometimes we find a problem. You know, it, it, believe it or not, each of those pieces of fiber has to be spliced in and maybe something, uh, uh, something got messed up as part of the splice or maybe it turns out that a, a piece of fiber was, was, was bad and needed to be replaced. So we do a lot of testing before we turn it up. So I know there's a, there's a period of time where folks say, it looks like everything's done, everything is there. What, you know, why, can't, why can't we order? Uh, and what happens sometimes is we'll, as we're running the tests, we'll find a problem and we'll go back in and have to make some changes. And some of them are actually in system changes. So it's nothing that you'll actually see being done out where you are, but they're, they're done in the back office. And then we, we test all of those circuits to make, make sure everything works. And then, we, and then we announce that we're, we're going to launch. And so if, if you're a first timer on the webinar here, you didn't catch me the last time, um, I'm, I'm kind of new, I'm, I'm new here to, to, uh, to this project, but I've been around for a lot of years and worked a lot of projects in the past uh, with, uh, with, with Mike on some of the early VADI projects. And the thing I noticed right off the bat was that, you know, we, had, we started out with some slides that would tell you, you know, this is when we expect to launch. And, and to be honest with you, and, I'm, and that's just the way I am, we weren't making the dates. And so we would give you a date, and then the date would have to move a week. And then the date would have to move another week. And then the day I'd have to move a third week. And I said, we, we, we can't really, I mean, that's not fair for you all to, to kind of be strung out like that. And it's not fair to us either because we wanna make sure that we're giving you accurate information. So that's why I said, we're gonna, you, you know, when we start, we're gonna tell you when we're gonna start in an area. And as we get close, um, we'll be telling the folks at, at, uh, at, at ABBA what's, that we're getting close. And then we're going to try and give you as much notice as we can when we actually launch. Now, so far, we've, we've not been good at being able to give days out. But I know that there are people who are literally, the day that the, the, the system is up, they're at their computer ready to hit the submit button to place their order. And we get that. So we want to give you as much notice as we can when the site uh, is actually launching. But you'll have an idea of, as you're driving around your neighborhood, when you start to see, you know, you, you'll, you'll see those pieces of orange pipe, then you'll see those disappear. That means they're trenching into the main streets. Then you'll see the boxes go in. And then you're going to see things get quiet for a couple of days. And that's when we're doing the testing. And that's kind of gives you a hint that, that we're getting close to, to, um, uh, to being able to launch. So I think we've, we've given a process overview that kind of sums all of that up. But again, I know I saw in the Q&A, a lot of people said, hey, I, I see things happening. You know, what, what, when, when are we going to be up and running? Um, so, you know, for now, you know, I, I just tell you that we, you know, we're working as fast as we can. We're bringing on more crews. I think yesterday we, we met a crew that uh, we brought up from, uh, from Martinsville to go in and do some, do some boring for us. So we're pulling folks from wherever we can to, to make the process happen as quickly as possible. And we've got a hard deadline of March 31st for everything. So, you know, we're, we're, we're going to be working really, really hard. Uh, at the same time, the other thing I wanted to mention on this is, is um, uh, you know, we have a general sequence of how we're going to be doing things. But, you know, as you may know, if, if you live in, in different areas, we're not just focusing everything in one area because, you know, we can be doing boring in one area while we're doing splicing in another area. So it's not happening with like everybody in one area all at once. So you're going to see projects that are being worked at different phases uh, in, in different places. And there's some streets I was on yesterday where we haven't gotten there yet. Um, and, and, and I know that. So if, if you know that if you're on the list, 
uh, and you're not seeing anything yet. We all know that, and we, we will be getting uh, we'll be getting to it. It just wasn't right in that in the sequence at that point. Um, so let's see. That probably explains most of that slide. Jason, you want to take me over to the next one? Thanks. Now this is a real busy slide that, that I'm not going to go over in detail with you, but we're going to make available for you. Uh, and if you go to the next slide, this is kind of the summary of what was on that busy slide that was just there with a lot of words. And, and, and what this is, and I went over this in, in big detail last uh, at the last webinar, and I'll, I'll, I'll hit the highlights of it again for you and then come back with any of the details that, that, that you want. But um, in addition, one of the things that, that I walked into when I came in was uh, a quick realization from, from, from you all, you know, the folks that are ordering, for the folks that are doing, and the county and the state, that we were not doing a great job of communicating what we were doing, what the process was. And so one of the first things that I got uh, um, uh, as, as my job was to come up with a plan, a better plan for uh, the process and communicating with you all as to, as to how we're doing things. And so that busy document that you just saw, we'll make available for you. And it's a more detailed version of what I'm just going to quickly go over here. But one of the things we realized real, real early on was that the process that we were using before, and if you've been around, you've heard this buried site checks, you'd have multiple visits come to your come to your house before anything would get done. And what we have realized, and we realize it is working in the, uh, in the couple months that we've been doing this now, is we're not doing that buried uh, uh, site check anymore. What we're gonna do is, and I'll, I'll, let me kind of take you from the back end and get you to that point and then kind of explain it. But uh, when we look at the boxes here, if you look at the top, we, we will update our systems, as I said, and know when everything is ready to go. We notify the community and that's been, uh, that's been done through uh, Mike and Jason and their group have been great at getting the word out to you all. Then you, that then allows you to, to place your, your order. And that's what Nancy is going to be talking about. Now, the step that this took out, if you've been around a while and, and, you've been, and you may have this question is, we used to be able to go in and like uh, press a button to show interest. Uh, or, or, and, and sometimes what that would do for some customers, it would actually allow, allow them to get an install date. So we cut that out because that doesn't work. You know, there, you, we can't give you an install date that far out and, and reasonably expect to make it. So what, so what we've done now is we've cut that out of the process uh, altogether. So, um, and that's why we said it's best for you to wait till you hear the word that it's, it's time to go ahead and place your order and then go ahead and place your, your order at that point. Then they'll get the uh, an install date will get scheduled for you. And then the next block there on the far right, um, this is the new process. Instead of coming out and doing that site check, we're actually gonna come out and in most cases, um, we're gonna be able to place a temp right there for you, that line, a temporary line that day so that you will be able to be on the internet that day. Now, the flip side, the the, the the potential problem with that is we're not going to be able to bury that line that same day. And, and it's going to take us some time to get out there and bury the line. There are some of you that do not want to have that temp line on there. And I, I get that. You may have animals. You, you, you may think it's a trip hazard. You may like to mow a lot. And you just say, look, I, I'm not willing to, I, I don't want to have a temp line. That's okay. That's okay. We can schedule a time to come in and then we'll put the permanent line in. But for most folks, I think they wanna get up and running right away. So we'll lay that temp line. Now, our, our goal is we'd love to be able to get out there in 10 days and get that temp line buried. We're not meeting that. We're not close to that, unfortunately. Um, so you're probably looking more like a couple of weeks out to 30 days. And uh, uh, we, we are constantly trying to add more crews in to get those lines buried because the longer they're sitting up on the ground, the more chance there is for something to happen to those lines. And, and, and it doesn't do us any good to have somebody cut a line because then we got to come out and replace it. And it's not good for you either because you're, you're out of service. So we want to get those things buried as quickly as we possibly can. So we're trying to bring on more crews that are able to go ahead and do those buries. I think, uh, you know, as a general rule, if you're 30 days out and you don't have your line buried, you're probably, it's probably not a bad idea to call in and say something about it. Um, 
and, and, and we'll know if we're, hopefully we're not that far behind in getting those, those things buried. Um, uh, so going back again to the talking about that temp line, there are other cases though where we can't do the temp line. And an example of that uh, is uh, if we've got to cross a, a driveway, for instance, um, I think in the last webinar, somebody asked, well, I've got a, dra a gravel driveway. Can you put the temp over the, the gravel driveway? And that's going to kind of be between you and the tech that comes out there to look at it and decide, uh, you know, the tech may look at it and say, well, I, I think because of the way the gravel is set in here, you know, we can do it. There's a chance it might it might get cut, but then we'll come out and replace it. Um, and then you all make the decision, you and the tech will make the decision as to whether you want to do a, a temp or not. I mean, if you say, I don't want to do the temp, the te tech is going to say, that's absolutely fine. We'll, we'll come out and we'll, you know, we'll have to do a buried drop for you um, then. And that, and that, that will get scheduled. So you'll have another visit um, if that happens. There's also been some instances where um, that drop would, for instance, have to cross a neighbor's yard and we're, we can't leave a drop sitting across your neighbor's yard to get to you. Uh, so in a case like that, we we should we won't be able to do a, a drop. So you know, I know I've, I've seen some messages from some folks who have been disappointed that they couldn't get the line in that day, and I I know that's disappointing. Um, but for you know a, a large number of people using that temp that first time out really works well, gets people up and running uh, as quickly as possible, and, and and then you know getting it buried is obviously part of the process. We'll get that done too. When the tech is there, they will um, they'll get everything installed for you, and then they're going to do that speed test that Jason was talking about. So before they leave, they've got a their their uh, uh, notebook that they've got is going to require them to do a speed check. So they're going to do that speed check off of their equipment directly connected to the network where we come in. So they will will have confirmed that the, the the speed is right there, and if there's a problem, they ain't leaving until they fix it, or they're going to tell you there's a problem. And and but to be honest with you, I don't think we've seen many of those instances. You know, I, I don't think I've, in fact I've, I haven't heard of one where somebody came in and said, "Hey, we did the speed test and it's not there." The fiber is there. You're got you've got you probably got a, a good connection. So the, the next piece I want to tell you, talk about, and again I'll hit this quickly, but if you got questions, glad to talk about it more. Are the locates. So uh, again, when we bury into the ground, we, Brightspeed, have to call in to Virginia 811, what used to be called Miss Utility, for a locate ticket. And what that locate ticket does is, is, is Virginia 811 then goes out to Dominion Power, to anybody else that's got facilities in that area, and they tell them, hey, somebody's digging in your area, you need to come and mark. And then the, each of those companies has a couple of days to get out there and place their their markings on the ground. We can't do anything until those marks are on the ground. We don't you know we don't go out and, and dig without knowing where other other facilities are. I mean, we all kind of are protecting each other's uh, facilities. So once you see if, if once you see that paint on the ground, that's the clue that something is about to be done. They're about to trench in, um, and so I know that plays a role for some of you who have private utilities, you may have private water, you know, a dog fence, other things that, that you've got, got there. So when, when you see that paint on the ground, that's kind of your notice that we're about to come in and trench in. So if you've got private utilities, you're going to want to have those marked too, because you don't want us, you don't want us cutting those. We're not going to know that they're there because they don't get located. The only thing that gets located are the, you know, the, the, the utilities from like Dominion or uh, a gas or one of those kinds of utilities. So you'll need to mark your, your private uh, facilities as well. I think we've recommended in the past, you know, use flags or something, something that kind of alerts us that there's something in the ground there so that, so that we don't wind up going across, uh, cutting through you. And I know that you all have been really, really good as communities of kind of getting together and, and doing some things where you can get a, um, a contractor that will come in and handle a group of you at once at, at a better rate, which is fantastic. And I know that uh, um, the folks there, uh, Jason and Mike also have, you can call them and they're able to connect you up with some options there that, you know, they probably can't give you a preferred guy or anything, but they can give you some options to, to work in your communities so that you can get those lines uh, marked if you know you're in one of those areas um, that's got that kind of an issue. Uh, Let's see, drop buried, and I can't. I cannot see. 
Let me see if I can move that last one on the far right. There we go. Property restoration. Yes. Okay. So the last thing that happens is property restoration. And I know this is a big issue for a lot of folks and, and, and I get it. So when our folks are done, they're supposed to put everything back in the state that they got, that they got it. You know, I used to say when I was in the scouts, leave no trace. And that should be what happens when they come through and, and, and do the work there. Sometimes that doesn't happen. If it doesn't happen, you need to let us know that it, that it hasn't happened. We'll come out and, and make it right. There are going to be some cases where, um, uh, and we've had this happen before, where something got done and we've, we've said, okay, what we, we're going to need you to file a claim on that. And we've got a process for doing that as well. And that's in that much longer document uh, with the information there as to who we use there that we can get you back to. So, that's kind of the, the overall steps. I just want you to understand that it's, it's different than it used to be. And I know if you've been on these webinars in the past, there was a very different process and we've made a major shift in the way we're, we're doing things. I honestly believe, and I, I, talk with the, I talk with the folks, like I said, I was out there yesterday. I talk with the folks and I, they tell me that this system is working to get things done more efficiently, get, get work out to you or get, get you all up and running uh, uh, faster, and that's kind of what we're interested in is making sure that we get get everybody up and running just as quickly as we possibly can. That's great. And so with that, um, I did want to just uh, put a put a pin in. We're going to jump back to some of these slides and discuss a couple of uh, issues related to the construction phase as well as the installation phase. But before we do that, um, respecting of of her time and need to get off at one o'clock exactly, we're going to move on to Nancy, and we're going to talk about the ordering process as well as the installation. My, uh, uh, Rich already covered the bulk of the installation process, but we're going to talk about the ordering process now. So Nancy? Thank you. So you might be asking yourself, what is fiber? You know, why is fiber internet better? Well, fiber optic internet uses lights. So it pulses, it's sending pulses through special glass cables. It's gonna move the information at nearly the speed of light. So it's an ultra fast broadband connection. It's gonna have enough speed to handle all of your devices simultaneously, or even power your small business software. I know we talked about some of the speed issues earlier, but if you also think about all of the devices that are connected, so you could have your home phones, um, your cell phones, your tablets, your gaming devices, TVs, even refrigerators can be connected to your internet. So you've got all these devices that are connected that allow you to play games, stream shows, you know, chat online. Um, so that's going to use your a lot of broadband bandwidth. Um, but we offer it with no data caps, no contracts, and no bundles. So fiber provide so fiber provides this really reliable, scalable internet connection. And Brightspeed Fiber offers that fully digital online experience where you're going to place your order online. You don't need to call an 800 number. You can simply go to, as you see the uh, URL up here on the left hand hand corner, www.q.brightspeed.com. That's where you'll start to place your order. So Brightspeed Fiber is a prepay platform. So you're going to need, as you get started, your email address and a credit card to place your order. So on the next slide, so after you go to that URL, www.brightspeed.com, this is the, the um, first page of the ordering process. You have to put in your address here, and then you'll select availability. If you are a um, CenturyLink customer today, go ahead and select that yes, where it says you're a current customer. Um, so if you were CenturyLink um, before and you had Copper DSL, you are Brightspeed customer now, and we are going to move you to Brightspeed Fiber. So <laughs> I know it gets a little confusing. Still today, if you're a Copper um, customer, you if you want to log into your account, you're still using your credentials as if you were on the Sprites or excuse me, the CenturyLink site. So in case anybody gets confused about that, um, and, and I recognize that it is very confusing, but right now um, you're going to go into this. That's why you're going into q.brightspeed.com um, because that's kind of a platform that um, we've we've merged together. So you, um, if you get confused, you can certainly uh, talk to our representatives too about it. So go to the next slide. 
So this is the next page that will come up. And here's where you select your fiber internet speed. There's two speeds available, 200 meg and 940 meg. So here you just highlight the box. It'll come up with the 940 meg highlighted. So you just click continue and go to the next screen. And here's where you have your modem options. The modem is coming at no charge. So you, you do have the option to provide your own. And if you want to provide your own modem, um, you can go to brightspeed.com and there are, are pages, websites, or web pages there that talk about modem compatibility. But the modem that you're gonna um, get with the fiber internet is at no charge to you. And it's a, a good modem. So I'd su suggest that you go ahead and, and just select that one that says zero for a $200 modem at no cost and then select continue. And then you get the next page. This website is where you're going to choose your installation date. So the date that pre-populates when you get here, it'll it'll churn for a few minutes because it's it's looking to see what dates are available. So when it comes up, it's giving you the soonest available date. So you can pick a date later than that. You can't pick anything sooner than that. So in this particular example, um, we had October date just because this is an older slide. But this is where you're going to want to. Uh, also, you can change underneath the date calendar. You can change the time if you want to. <clears throat> so um, also underneath that box is a um, spot where a little box where you have to check that um, you agree to the subscriber agreement before you can continue. So after you've done that, you've entered your email address, your phone number, you can click continue and go to the next page. So here's the first chance that you have to review your order. On the left side in that box, it's giving you, you know, the speed that you requested. It's, you know, another time to uh, review your address, make sure that's correct, tells you what your charges are going to be. And then underneath those two boxes, there's a lot of little, uh, little boxes where there's additional information. So you can scroll over those and you'll see additional information that's provided there. Also, anytime um, when you're on, um, on our website, there is always a click to chat. So in the lower right hand corner, it kind of gives you a little support box. So as you're um, going through the order, if you have any questions or concerns, click on that. One of our Brightspeed agents will be able to help you there too. So if everything is okay on this page, then you're going to select um, continue. This is the payment information page. Again, the order summary is on the in box, <clears throat> excuse me, the box on the, the left. Otherwise, you're going to put your name. And if you're a business, this is where you're going to enter how your business name is to appear. So after you fill out that information, you're going to click it, you're going to click continue again. And the next slide is actually where you start to put in your credit card information. So after you put in your credit card information at the very bottom of that page is a submit button. And after you click submit, you're going to receive a confirmation email. It will have like an order number and it'll, it'll recap again, um, you know, your order installation date, your address, um, the summary of charges I think are on there also. So it's pretty simple. I would highly recommend that um, if you have any problems, you use the click to chat. We do have an 800 number. We do have a customer service number. And if you're an existing customer, you can always um, call us. I think the next page might have, oh, nope, that's the speed test. Oh, nope, there it is. The new and existing customers. So you can call that 800, or excuse me, 833-692-7773 at any time also if you have any questions or if you have any concerns. Um, also, so there's the other little click to chat button. It appears on our website on almost every page that you go to. So anytime you need assistance, that is an option. And, and then we kind of already covered what happens at the time that your internet is installed and our computer and our technicians do that, um, they do that speed test before they leave. But there's additional information on our website. So if you go to that, like, why is my internet slow? If you click on that URL, there's some pages there, lots of information about how to troubleshoot um, in your home, how, you know, what to look for. And then again, <clears throat> if that doesn't satisfy you, you can do the click to chat, talk with one of our agents, or you can call us at the 8 833 number.
I think is the next slide. I think that might be it for me. The rest of it is, yeah, the appendix with Q and A's that we've covered before. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Nancy. Um, and I'm going to bring us back to, um, I'm going to do it a little bit backwards. We're going to go back to this slide. We're going to talk about um, utilities and particularly the private utility locates as we've discussed with some of our um, other project areas. Um, and as, as Rich was alluding to, our recommendation, um, and especially this is this is especially true as you're moving into the Stony Point area where we've got little pocket neighborhoods, one road, two roads, um, is that you go ahead and uh, see if you can work together with your neighbors um, to plan uh, your private utility locate. Um, email us and we can provide you a list of utility locate private utility locate companies that work in our area. Um, and what we've seen residents do is they'll actually pool their resources um, and put together one contract. So the, the community will put together one contract with that provider, and that provider will work with Brightspeed and its uh, contractors to make sure that they know when people's installations are going to be happening. And that way they know when to mark and where. And that's the big thing, because if you've got a large property, um, it's not really helpful to mark every private utility location across your entire property when the path is really, really straightforward and they're gonna be able to, to tell you exactly what that path is on your installation day, um, whether you have a temp line or not. So uh, that's our recommendation. Now, now, why is it a recommendation to pool your resources? If you contract with a company individually, um, they're going to give you uh, a rate per hour, but they're also going to give you a minimum amount of time that it's going to be required. Um, so they're going to tell you, um, you can have us for, let's say, $75 an hour, um, and we require two hours. Um, but the technician might not spend more than 20 minutes locating the private utilities that are in the area that you need them to locate. So by pooling your resources, that minimum time can be spread around everybody's installation. And then the uh, HOA, if there's a HOA or the um, community, you know, as a, as a collective can just split up everybody's charge based on the amount of time that was charged to their address. So that's our recommendation. Uh, if you don't want to go that way, that's fine. Email us and we will still provide a list of private utility locate companies that you can access. Um, you know, we happen to have an inside line because Rich here actually serves on the Virginia 811 board. Um, and if you go to Virginia 811's website, you can look up a list of uh, utility locate providers that work in our area um, yourselves. And you can even look at the ones that do private utility locates, which are actually noted by, I believe, by a little P in above their name. So um, the, that's our recommendation as far as that goes. In terms of timing, again, um, if you work with a with a group contract, so that way um, everybody's sort of on one ticket, um, your contractor can work with, the private utility contractor can work with Brightspeed to make sure that they know when everybody's timing is going to be, and they can actually go ahead and just plan on marking at the appropriate time. If you're doing it on your own, maybe you've got, you know, you don't really have neighbors. You've got lots of, lots of distance between yourselves, um, and it doesn't make sense to, to do uh, a group buy. Um, you can still work with the utility locate provider, um, but the timing uh, might not be as, as clear cut. And our recommendation is when you see that there's, you can call ahead, uh, you can call the and, and get a contract ahead of time. But when you see that your public utilities are getting marked, that's when you should go ahead and make sure that your private utility locate company is going to come and do those markings. And as, as we've mentioned, um, and especially as winter is coming, you don't want your locates to happen on top of snow. Um, you don't want your locates to happen um, before a big rain that might wash away some of that paint. Um, so have your uh, locates marked, um, if possible, with flags. Now, that might mean that you pay uh, somebody to mark those flags, or if you want to go to the Lowe's and get yourself a big packet of uh, landscaping flags, after they come and do your markings, you can punch down those flags yourself just following the path. But um, our recommendation is for that in part because um, if there's weather, that could affect the markings. But also, um, if there's a delay, as Rich was saying, um, their goal is 10 days. Um, but right now, you know, at about 30 days, that's when you should call us and, and make sure that we can escalate and make sure that, that there's, there's awareness that you're still waiting for your burial. Um, so if it's 30 days, uh, paint might not work as well as flags. Uh, flags are going to last a lot longer. We're mostly out of mowing season, so the flags aren't really much of a hazard. Um, so that's our recommendation on that. Again, that's a lot to sort of throw at, but uh, it's important that we avoid um, any damage to people's property. Uh, with that, I'm going to move briefly over to that last one, property restoration. Um, 
if anybody has any issues with the work that has happened, so the construction work that has happened, um, first, have a little patience. Um, there, there's, you know, in construction, there, there's lots of crews that are coming by, they're doing lots of work. They're usually not going to restore something until that area has been completed. So it might be, you might notice that the trucks go away from your immediate area, um, but they're going to come back. Um, if there's something that, that, you know, construction has been completed and there's still something that hasn't been addressed, reach out to us and we will make sure that Brightspeed uh, lets its, its contractors know that they need to, to resolve this to your satisfaction. After installation, um, you might have, after the, 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 lot, the drop has been buried, um, you know, the expectation is that same contractor is going to come back and they're going to restore your property to what it should be. If you have any difficulties with that, if there are any issues, um, let us know and we'll reach out to Brightspeed and they will once again make their, sure that their contractors uh, resolve it to your satisfaction. And then we're going to go back a little bit to um, our, um, our construction phase. Um, so a lot of people are asking about, I saw people working in this area. I saw people are working in that area. Is that you? Is that you? Is that you? Um, we don't know. Um, so the reality is, uh, work of this type happens in lots of different places at lots of different times by lots of different people. Um, that doesn't mean, uh, that it isn't, uh, bright speeds contractors out there doing the work. Um, the phases that Rich was talking about in terms of first putting conduit down. Um, I wanted to, to spend just a minute on that because the type of work that's happening is really dependent on the terrain. So what Rich was saying, um, where we were on Turkey Sag, and I was able to actually join him for part of that, uh, part of his adventure in the field, um, is what's known as boring. And so there's a road, um, it's paved, um, it's got culverts on either side, it looks like a rural Albemarle County road. Um, and the crews were actually taking this boring machine, which uh, it sounds really dull, but it's actually really cool bad joke there. Um, and it basically took this, this bit that looks like a, a, a bent up shovel. Um, and then these rods and it just shoves this thing under the ground. And if done properly and when done properly, as we got to see them do, um, it doesn't disturb the earth very much. Um, and then it can go under things. And that's where it's really, really cool is that you can actually move under driveways and under, um, terrain and hopefully, um, not run into anything. And, and that's where where it, it becomes really important. So um, in order to get that equipment into that space, you need to have space, you need to have room. So there are going to be occasions where you might see people actually out on the side of the road um, doing what looks more like old fashioned construction work. They've got a shovel, they've got some picks, and they've got some wheelbarrows, and they're just digging a hole. And often that means that the area is either too small to access with the equipment, or there are terrain issues that are making it difficult to just use that boring machine to to sort of shove this conduit into the earth. Um, the other thing is, as, as Rich was saying, that construction happens in phases. So you might see a crew come by and do a whole bunch of boring and you'd see all these orange pipes sticking up out of the ground. And then you might not see anything for a little while. And then you might see a crew come by with this big spool of something and they don't spend a lot of time in any one location and they seem to be really rushing and they're just zooming through your neighborhood and then they're gone. And all that's left now is little spots where they dug dug a hole and they shoved those uh, those those uh, orange pipes into the ground and they maybe put a little a concrete vault on top of them a little box um, and later you might see a crew come by and start to put in other equipment um, next to those vaults and along the path of that fiber um, and again you might not see anything for a little while these project areas are not small this isn't neighborhood by neighborhood this is instead a pretty big area by a pretty big area. And so it's possible that nothing's happening that you see, but they're waiting for something and there's still gonna be something else that's gonna happen before. And so please have patience as you're seeing these crews come by and then disappear. Um, we absolutely understand everybody, everybody's eagerness for this product. Um, have a little patience. And, and if you have questions, if you're worried that something's gone wrong, absolutely reach out to us, BAAO at albemarle.org. Uh, but just bear in mind, just because somebody's not working on something doesn't mean you've missed anything. It often just means that there's work happening behind the scenes. There's work happening that that needs to be completed before they can launch. And for 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 that last bit, um, where all they're doing is testing each strand, we're not talking at that point about a big crew. We're talking about what might be just a few guys in a pickup truck 
Um, and all that they're doing is going spot by spot and just lighting up a strand of fiber, testing to make sure it's working at the speeds that it's supposed to, and then marking the ones that aren't working so that somebody else can come back, fix that spot, and then and then start all over again, start that process of verification over again. So um, again, this is construction work. Bear with us. It's really cool. Um, and, and the outcome is going to be great for all of you. Um, so we've got some questions that have actually come in um, as we've been talking. Um, I'm going to, I wanted to say one quick thing, and that's that if you've noticed that questions showed up in the chat and then they disappeared, um, if you click on the answered tab, um, we've been doing this for a little while. And so we're pretty good at knowing what the answers to some of your all's questions are. And with that, we have done a pretty good job, I think, of being able to answer people's questions as they um, come in and being able to um, respond with uh, the answers that we've given you all before. And so if you saw a question, if you want to just peruse the questions that have already been asked, you can open up that Q&A tab, click on answered, and then take a look there. Um, and I'm going to start with a question for Rich. Um, let's see. Uh, this comes from the Rosemont community. It was emailed earlier. Um, and they bring up, the, they ask, has the, has the process changed again? Um, because they had several people who actually in the Rosemont area had their first visit um, yesterday um, and today, um, all the scheduled appointments on time. Um, and they were told uh, that they were going to get a drop. Uh, so they didn't get a temporary line. Um, so uh, I, I wanted to give you a chance to just reassure people, one, that, that the process hasn't changed again, um, but that, that these instances are likely uh, instances where a temporary drop wasn't going to be available for terrain issues or other issues, um, and um, that, you know, to address concerns about this being drawn out a little ways. Sorry, I had to unmute myself there. Yeah, you're exactly you're exactly right there. So, as I said, most cases, and, and as I drove around yesterday, I mean, I kind of saw this in, in a lot of places where I did not see that you know where I, where I saw where a, a temp drop would work. But as you, as you drive around some areas like Rosemont, depending on where that device is, that um, where the distribution of the fiber is, you might have to go under a uh, under a driveway. So yeah, in a case like that. We're going to look at it. We're going to talk with you, kind of get the idea of where you think you know, the line ought to be going, or tell. We're going to tell you where we think it ought to go based on where we know it should should go, uh, where the driveway is, and where the device is going to be attached to the house. You know, if there are changes that you need to make from there, I think if there's small changes, people are willing to work with you on that. But yeah, so those are the exception cases where we've got to go in, and unfortunately, we're going to have to bore underneath that that driveway. I mean, a lot of times maybe they can come out and look and figure a way maybe to get it from the other side so that they don't have to cross a driveway. And I think they'll try to do that if they can. But uh, there's some instances, like when you look in Rosemont, you got a lot of driveways in there that, that folks are going to have to cross. And those are cases where you'll have to get the buried drop. So that fits in. That That's the regular process that we're doing now. Yep. Um, and then again, as, as Rich was saying um, earlier, um, right now, the limiting step, the rate limiting step are those buried drops. Um, there's a there's a limitation in the number of crews to do that sort of work. So with with that in mind, um, you know, the, the, the expectation that that we're that Brightspeed is offering is 30 days. Um, if, if you haven't gotten your drop taken care of within 30 days, reach out to us and, and we will we will uh, let Brightspeed know and they will do their best to escalate. Um, they're bringing on new crews, um, which is a, an exciting thing because it means that not only are we getting people um, to do the work, but adding to the capacity. So not just, you know, working, trying to get that the capacity that exists to work more, but actually adding to the capacity to get this work done. Um, and then the other question is, um, and, and this is specific to uh, the Rosemont community. And, I'm, and I bring that up because one of the things that our office is not interested in doing is micromanaging. Um, so to be clear, um, my office, our office is not aware of which subcontractors are working where um, at any given point in time. Um, and 
Uh, the reason for that is that we're not the contractor. We're not the general contractor on this. Um, we are the administrators to the grant. And so we trust and rely on our partner, Brightspeed, to actually manage the contract and the, and the contractors. And so uh, the question is, uh, can Brightspeed confirm, and again, this is just specific to the Rosemont area, that SNN, um, and in particular their contact there, is the is the the contractor that will be doing installations in their area and in particular they're here they're just wanting to make sure that as they look at the private utility locates that that contractor's contact is the right one for their private utility locates to coordinate with yeah and i, I think i can pretty pretty reasonably say especially just for for rosemont that that that's the case and we encourage folks um, to work with those to, to work with those teams if you've got some ideas of things that might work better to share those with them and you know sometimes I mean the, you got to make the right business decision but you know if, if we know that if you tell us that there are some facilities in a certain location and it would be better to go in a different route you know they're certainly going to want to consider that because it's going to it's going to save us money and time and it's going to get you running running faster so but yeah now for for anyone that's from other areas, um, you know, I be honest, I've been pushing folks to let's bring on some some additional contractors as well as we're working here. So you may see others going forward. But I think for Rosemont, you're pre we're pretty safe in saying that those are the right people to deal with. And I've seen some of the emails going back and forth um, between them and representatives of homeowners associations and been very, uh, very happy to see uh, great conversations going on between the two trying to work things out. So I think that's that's good. Right. Um, and then um, I'm going to dip into the answered for just a minute. Um, but before we do that, um, I wanted to ask Ms. Roland's question, um, how will send receive fax work if you use online phone service? So this is in particular, it sounds like it's asking uh, when you have uh, that that old fax machine, that the fax machines that, that people use um, still to this day, um, and you're switching from a, an old copper telephone line um, to a VoIP line, to a to a voice over IP line, which is one of uh, one of Brightspeed's offerings. After you've got your fiber connection, um, what what is the experience for that machine um, going to be like? Well, I'll throw that to Rich. Uh, I don't know the I, I don't know the specific answer to this one. I'll, I'll have to look. Um, I mean, I know and and. Jason, I know you've got you've got fiber service there. I've got I live in Short Pump, uh, just outside of Richmond, and I use Verizon. I've got a new new newish machine that has a fax capability, and I just plug it right in, and it works just like a normal. I don't think I can use my phone line at the same time I'm using my fax line now. But 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 for Brightspeed, I don't know the answer to that. I've got to assume it's the same. But I, but I probably would need to check on that and get back to, to confirm that. And it's probably, Jason, I don't know if you've seen this one in the prior Q and A's that we've had to know the answer to that. But uh, um, I, I, you know, I, would, I would tell you subject to check that it's, it works the same way. But the other thing I would probably warn you is if you got a real old fax machine, might not be the same. So uh, probably one that we probably need to take a harder look at and get back to you on. Yep, and uh, you know the 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 technologies. Um, I, I think people would be surprised to know that the technologies behind a lot of the stuff that we do on our telephones hasn't changed in about a hundred years, um, and that's uh, that includes actually the 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 technology behind the fax machine is uh, I believe what's known as uh, circuit switch data, um, and it literally means that there is there's a there's a, a button somewhere. A physical button now simulated that was being pressed to 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 actually actuate things to to deliver that service and so um, a lot of things haven't changed on phone systems and there are ways to accommodate sometimes and there are ways that sometimes can't be accommodated so just bear that in mind as you're uh, expecting this fiber service that some things that you've relied on that work on your phone system might not work on your uh, fiber system so um, if you have a specific service that you're using a phone system for or your copper phone lines for um, you know, be on the lookout, check with your manufacturer, check with your service provider to see what changes need to be done when you get fiber service. Um, and from Ms. Lippert, um, have things changed with regards to ordering VoIP service? We didn't cover that in the, in the, 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 the product chat. Um, the, one of the things that, uh, that I think is notable, um, is that you don't order it at the same time that you order fiber service. So we asked, Nancy, to really focus today on ordering that 
that fiber service. Um, once you have your fiber connection, um, so if you have a telephone line with Brightspeed right now, um, when you order your fiber service, you're going to still have uh, your telephone line um, and you're still going to have telephone service at that point. When you order your VoIP service, um, you're going to go back into the, the your account and you're going to go back into the ordering system and you're going to add uh, VoIP service to your system. Um, and if you, if you want to see how that works, um, you can look at our old slides from the November or uh, October webinars uh, where Nancy included those in our slides. Um, and uh, at that point, um, you will have your VoIP service. But again, it's just a separate order that occurs after you have your... Um, your, your fiber service activated. Um, from Mr. Southall, um, I got my installation on October 26th. I'm happy with the service so far. I'm streaming on YouTube TV. I do get some searching arrow that lasts for less than 15 seconds, but I currently believe it's YouTube TV. Other than that, I'm good. That's great feedback, Mr. Southall, and I really appreciate that. I'm glad that your connection is is alive and that you're enjoying it. Um, as a YouTube TV subscriber, I can also let you know. Um, Sometimes those UI moments, those moments where you like you click on something and you expect it to just load, those those are the ones that irk you the most because you're just like, I want to be able to watch TV. And in the old days, you just turned on the TV. Um, but um, you are getting it in hopefully uh, 4K, uh, uh, Ultra HD with surround sound. And uh, we couldn't have hoped for that from our old, uh, old, our old rabbit ears or even our cable. So um, really excited about that. Um, and then, like I said, I was going to dip into the answered questions. Um, so some quick uh, updates. Um, will we post the PowerPoint slides? We post all of our slides online after the call. Um, so you'll be able to get that later today. Um, and then a video of this, the, the video of, of, of this call will be posted as well. Um, and you can do that at our, at our at our website. And so if you, if you, it's a, it's a chunky URL, so I won't give it to you, but if you just Google Albemarle County, B-A-A-O, um, you'll find it, or you can just email us at B-A-A-O at albemarle.org. Um, we shared the customer con service contact number that Nancy shared earlier. Um, and again, that's 833-692-7773. Um, if you have um, any questions about your actual availability, are you included in this project? Have you missed anything? You can always email us, bao at albemarle.org. I'm contractually required to say that 25 times, so we're six six to go. Um, and uh, the, the, the expectation there is we will check your address. Um, if you're getting email updates and you haven't emailed us to ask if, if, you, if your address is included, um, go ahead and do that. Um, we're happy to do it. And it only takes a few minutes for, for us to send it over to Brightspeed and verify with them that you're included. Um, within 48 hours, we'll get you a verification. And once you do that, all you need to know, you don't need to express interest. Um, they're coming to you. All you need to do is wait for my email saying you can place your orders and then they will get you your service. Um, Let's see. Um, we've got um, a couple more questions about uh, restoration. Um, so again, if construction operations have been completed and construction property restoration hasn't been completed, let us know, uh, BAO at albemarle.org, and we will go ahead and let Brightspeed know, and they will let their contractor know, and uh, we will make sure that the the, the restoration occurs to your your satisfaction. Um, questions about the uh, fiber optic cable coming from uh, the 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 outside to the inside um, is it going to follow the same path as the copper that's already coming in? In general, uh, wherever possible, nobody's going to drill a hole, an extra hole, if they don't need to. Um, so. If that hole, if that path that the copper wire is going in is a suitable location, um, then that's where they're going to be going. Um, if you have an older house and you have a, a strange installation for your phone line, or maybe there's there are going to be factors uh, that are going to limit your ability to to have the the installation happen there, they still might use that hole. Uh, but you're going to learn more when the installation tech comes to do that work. So um, in general, um, if you've already got a copper line coming in, that's probably where it's going to come in. But if there are any complications, you'll learn about that from the installation tech. Um, so um, a question about the the rentals of the modems. Um, so uh, and this is something we've thrown over over to Brightspeed a few times um, as as our role as resident advocates. Um, at present, um, if you choose the 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 higher uh, speed and higher cost plan, your modem rental is included. If you choose the lower speed, 
uh, your modem rental is not included. And at that point, you have a choice. You can rent, which actually brings the cost pretty close to the higher speed plan. Or uh, you can you can buy one of your own. Again, you can look at the compatibility list to choose whether to buy your own or not. Um, you know that 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 is a pretty you know common thing that people choose to buy their own uh, in order to save a little bit of money. Um, and if you don't need the extra speed, then that's certainly an option. Um, however, if you choose the faster sp speed plan, then it is included. Um, let's see. Um, that is all. Um, does anybody else have any more questions? Jason, what's that email address uh, if someone needs it for uh, for you all? <laughs> that would be. I, just figured you, I think I counted. You got five left. So. That would be Bravo Adam Adam Oscar at albumoral.org. B A A O at albumoral.org. I think I have met my quota, and so with <laughs> that, um, unless anybody has any more questions, we're going to be. Uh, signing up. Actually, I oh, uh, Ms. Bowen was there. I did have one more. This came in by email while we were talking. Um, we talked about the Bell store um, point. Um, and I don't want to date Rich because Rich used to used to work for Brightspeed a long time ago. And back back in the in the in the in the, the old days, it was known as the Bell store. Um, you might all know it now as the Stony Point Market. Uh, so when we talk about the Bell store, we're talking about Stony Point Market. Um, and, and so if you have the the uh, if that's one, you know, if you saw that and you were a little confused, that's what we're talking about in terms of, of where Stony, where Bell Store is. Um, if there's any, if there's anyone on the chat that knows when that change happened, please drop a little note, if, a guess, please drop a note in there. I'd love to know when that, when I, that I, I will pass that, that information on to you uh, that, that I received by email. Um, and Mr. Friedman, we've got your question from earlier regarding um i have an install date for next week but the gray tower is across the road um if you check the answered um it, it tells you but basically um as i've said you know the installation tech's gonna let you know um it, they're gonna let you know now you might see something in the road um in front of your house beside your house and you think that's where it's going to come from and it might not um and that's why i say you know the Wait for your installation tech to come. If, if you're worried you're not going to get the drop that you want, if you're worried that something is going to go wrong, wait for the installation tech to come and they will let you know. Um, if there is a reason why you will not be able to get your uh, your, your temporary line, um, they will let you know and they will talk to you about what the path is going to be and they'll they'll coordinate with you. Um, so nothing nothing that needs to be to be worried about right now, but don't make presumptions about what you see on the road and where your, your connection is going to be coming from. Um, and then from Miss Bowen, um, will someone from Bright Tree contact us to coordinate our bills, dropping DSL and keeping copper? Um, so it sounds like you have uh, some pretty specific questions, um, and, and we're happy to to refer those up to Brightspeed. So if you want to send us an email um, at uh, bao at albemoral.org, Mike, you got to mark that. I get overtime for that one. Um, then we will uh, we will pass that up to Brightspeed and let them discuss it. Um, and an updated list of homes, which are in which service group, as I mentioned earlier in the call, um, for the tranches in the Stony Point area, um, we are working to uh, to, to address, uh, to get the, the street address lists um, that are obviously going to include street segments for those roads that are not completely in one or the other. Um, and so we will get those out to you um, when we have them. Um, and then if you're talking about uh, uh, prior project areas, if you're talking about any of the currently open project er uh, project areas, email us and we're happy to help you uh, figure that out. Um, and we did see that answer that in the early 90s, Bells was sold and changed to Bobby's and then sold again and changed to the Stony Point market in early 2000. So uh, with that trivia out of the way, thank you all. Thank you, Rich. Thank you to Nancy, who had to go to another call and Heather. Um, and thank you to all of you for um, for asking your questions and for joining us for this webinar. Uh, and we are going to come off at quite possibly the shortest we've been in about six months, an hour and 15 minutes. We've been doing this for a year. I really appreciate you all. So thank you so much. Have a great weekend. Thank you.